Hello students, welcome back to JJ's physics class. Today we are going to solve numericals based on ray optics and optical instruments. Question number 20. A convex lens of focal length 25 cm is placed coaxially in contact with a concave lens of focal length 20 cm. Determine the power of the combination. Will the system be converging or diverging in nature? Given convex lens focal length is 25 cm but for concave lens f is minus 20 as a diverging lens. So power of the combination will be p1 plus p2. As we know that power is inversely proportional to what focal length. So p will be equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2. So f1 value is 25, f2 value is 10. So why this is 100 here? Because diopter is always measured in meter. So we need to convert that meter into centimeter. So substituting all the values, you get it as power and will be minus 1 diopter. Because diopter is always measured in meter, not in centimeter. Since it is a negative power, the system will act as a diverging lens. Next question, a ray of light passes through an equilateral prism in such a way that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of emergence and each of these angles is 3 by 4 times the angle of the prism. Determine the angle of deviation and the refractive index of the prism. So since it is an equilateral prism, angle of the prism will be about 60 degree. That is angle A will be 60 degree and it's clearly mentioned the angle of incidence is equal to angle of refraction so angle of e is equal to angle of r which is 3 by 4 times the angle of the prism that is 3 by 4 times 60 will be equal to 45 degree and we have the equation delta plus a will be equal to i plus e so angle of deviation you can calculate it as 30 degree the refractive index of the prism will be we have the formula substitute the values you get it as 1.41 next question Two monochromatic rays of light are incident normally on the face AB of an isosceles right angle prism ABC. The refractive index of the glass prisms for the two rays 1 and 2 are respectively 1.3 and 1.5. Trace the path of these rays after entering through the prism. First let us calculate for ray 2. So we have the critical angle formula mu2 is equal to 1 by C2. Or C2 is 0.66, so critical angle 42, which is less than 45. Since the angle of incidence is more than the critical angle, the ray will be total internally reflected. But for ray 1, mu1 1 is 1 by sin c, so we get it as critical angle for ray 1 is 50, which is more than 45 degree. So what happens? The angle of incidence is less than the critical angle the ray will be totally refracted. So when you draw this diagram, for ray 2, it is total internal reflection takes place at this point, but for ray 1, it is refracted. So you have to draw this diagram. You need to make sure that you draw an arrow in each diagram and mark all the angles, then you get the complete marks for this. Question number 23, use the mirror equation to show that an object is placed between f and 2f of a concave mirror produce a real image beyond 2f. So we have the mirror formula 1 by f is equal to 1 by v plus 1 by u. For a concave mirror, f is less than 0 and object distance is less than 0. And object between f and 2f when u is minus f, so v will be infinity. When u is equal to minus 2f, v will be minus 2f. So the image distance v is greater than or equal to minus 2f negative and the image is real next question you are given two converging lenses of focal length 1.25 and 5 centimeter to design a compound microscope if it is decided to have a magnification of 30 find out the separation between the objective and the eyepiece when the image is at infinity we have the magnification formula Calculate the values, you get it as L is equal to 7.5 centimeter. But when the image is formed at the near point, we have the formula for magnification. Substitute the values, you get it as the distance between the objective and the eyepiece is equal to 6.25 centimeter. Next question is, a small telescope 
has an objective length of focal length 150 cm and eyepiece of focal length 5 cm what is the magnifying power of the telescope for viewing distant object in normal adjustment if this telescope is used to view a 100 meter tall tower 3 km away what is the height of the image of the tower formed by the objective lens if the telescope is for normal adjustment the final image is at infinity then the magnification is given by m is equal to f not by fe f not is 150 cm and fe 5 cm so magnification is 30 if tall tower is at a distance 3 km the objective lens of focal length 150 cm it will form its image at a distance v not so using lens formula v not we will get it as 1.5 m or 150 cm but we know the magnification formula image distance divided by object distance or hi by h not or v not by u not so apply this formula in this given equation so you get it as height of image is equal to 0.05 m or 5 cm draw a ray diagram to show how a right angle isosceles prism may be used to bend the path of light rays by 90 degree write the necessary condition in terms of the refractive index of the material of the prism for the ray to bend to 90 degree the ray diagram is shown here so it will be completely internally reflected and the condition for internal reflection is 45 degree greater than that of the critical angle or when you use the critical angle formula you get it as sin 45 is greater than sin ic or 1 by root 2 is greater than sin ic because sin 45 is 1 by root 2 which is greater than 1 by refractive index so mu is greater than 2 next question is define refractive index of a medium second question in the following diagram calculate the speed of light in the liquid of unknown refractive index first question answer is the refractive index can be defined as the ratio of speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in the medium when you write this answer write also the formula mu is equal to c by v also mention the parameters where mu is the refractive index of the medium c is the speed of light in vacuum and v is the speed of light in the given medium for the second part what is given width of liquid surface is given depth of liquid is given that is 40 and as you can see that the ray is just getting refracted or it just gazes along the liquid surface so we have the critical angle formula mu is equal to 1 by sin ic but how do you calculate sin ic since it is a triangle we can calculate sin ic using what perpendicular side divided by hypotenuse side but what is hypotenuse using pythagoras theorem you can calculate hypotenuse side as 50 so you can calculate sin ic the relation connecting refractive index speed of light that is mu is equal to c by v equate with critical angle equation that is 1 by ic so we get it as v is equal to c sin ic when you substitute the values you get it as 1.8 into 10 power of 8 meter per second next question number 28 Three light rays, red, green, and blue, are incident on a right angle prism ABC at face AB. The refractive indices of the material of the prism, red, green, and blue wavelengths are 1.39, 1.44, and 1.47, respectively. Out of three, which color ray will emerge out of AC? Justify your answer. Trace the path of these rays after passing through each face. so we have the equation connecting critical angle and the refractive index using that we can calculate the critical angle for red green and blue so we get it as 46 degree 43.9 and 42.8 respectively so using total internal reflection condition out of three colors the red color will undergo refraction and blue and green will undergo total internal reflection so this is the diagram for that case but they have given another condition here all the three colors will undergo total internal reflection if they are incident normally on one of the faces of an equilateral prism as shown in figure 3 this is due to the reason that the incident angle on the second surface will be greater than the critical angle for all the colors next question 
An astronomical telescope uses two lenses of powers 10D and 1D. What is the magnifying power in normal adjustment? So we have the power of objective 1D and IPC is 10D. So we have the relation connecting focal length and power. Now magnifying power will be what? Minus of F0 by Fe. So minus 10. An illuminated object and a screen are placed 90 centimeter apart. Determine the focal length and nature of the lens required to produce a clear image on the screen, twice the size of the object. From question, it's clearly mentioned the object and screen are placed 90 centimeter apart. So we have the first equation u plus v, which is equal to 90 centimeter, and the image is twice the sun size of the object. So we have two equations here. Equate two equations, you get it as V is equal to 60 centimeter. Then use the lens formula. We can calculate the focal length of 20 centimeter. Since it is a positive value, we need the convex lens of focal length 20 centimeter is required. A convex lens is used to obtain a magnified image of an object on a screen 10 meters from the lens. If the magnification is 19, find the focal length of the lens. So we have u is given minus 10 because it's a convex lens and the object is placed on the left side. So all the distances to the left side is taken as negative. Magnification is 19 and we have the equation magnification v by u is minus 19. So is v is equal to minus 19. It's not mu, it is u. Okay. Then we have the lens formula. Substitute the values if you get it as 0.5 meter. Next, a convex lens of focal length 20 centimeter is placed coaxially with a convex mirror of radius of curvature 20 centimeter. The two are kept at 15 centimeter from each other. A point object lies 60 cm in front of the convex lens. Draw a ray diagram to show the formation of the image by the combination. Determine the nature and position of the image formed. So we have for convex mirror, F is equal to R by 2, that is 10 cm. For convex lens, calculate the image distance V. So using the lens formula, we get it as image distance is equal to 30 cm. Now for convex mirror, use the mirror formula, calculate the image distance that is 6 uh, centimeter. So the final image distance is 6 centimeter. Now using this values, we have to draw the ray diagram. This is the ray diagram. For convex lens, the image is formed at 6 centimeter. So the image is formed behind the mirror and will act as a virtual object for the convex mirror. Okay, So the final image that is I2 is formed between focus and the pole of the mirror. When you draw this diagram, arrow mark is compulsory and mention the lens and the mirror and mark all the distances thoroughly. Then you will get full mark. Next question. A convex lens of focal length 20 cm is placed coaxially with a concave mirror of focal length 10 cm at a distance of 50 cm apart from each other. A beam of light coming parallel to the principal axis is incident on the convex lens. Find the position of the final image formed by this combination. Draw the ray diagram showing the formation of the image. Again, this is same as the previous question. So for convex lens, calculate the image distance. For concave mirror, calculate the image distance. Then draw the ray diagram. So you get the ray diagram of this. Since it is minus 15, so the image is formed on the left side of the concave mirror. So the final image is real, lies between F and C of a concave mirror. Next question. A convex lens of focal length 20 cm is placed coaxially with a convex mirror of radius of curvature 20 cm. The two are kept 15 cm apart. 
a point object is placed 40 cm in front of the convex lens. Find the position of the image found by this combination. Draw the ray diagram showing the image formation. As you know that F1 is given, that is 20 cm and focal length of mirror is 20 by 2, that is 10 cm. And for convex lens, calculate the image distance. For convex mirror, calculate the object distance, that is minus 25, you get. Now, lens and mirror are parallel and 15 cm apart. So, 1 by V plus 1 by U is equal to 1 by F or 1 by V is equal to 1 by F minus. So, substitute the values. V, you get it as 7.5 cm. So, this is the ray diagram. So, image will be virtual and lies between pole and focus of a convex mirror. Next question, 35. Explain the following giving reasons. When monochromatic light is incident on a surface separating two media, the reflected and refracted light both have the same frequency as the incident frequency. That is purely due to the atomic structure of matter because reflection and refraction arises through interaction of incident light with atomic constituents of matter which vibrate with the same frequency as that of the incident light. Second sub-question, when light travels from a rarer to denser medium, the speed decreases. Does this decrease in speed imply a reduction in energy carried by the wave? Now, energy carried by a wave depends on the amplitude of the wave and not on the speed of the wave propagation. So, hence the energy of the wave remains same and does not decrease. How to write complete sentence? In the wave picture of light, the intensity of light is determined by the square of the amplitude of the wave. What determines the intensity in the photon picture of light? For a given frequency, intensity of the light in the photon picture is determined by the number of photons incident normally on a crossing a unit area per unit time. Next question. A convex lens of focal length 25 cm and a convex mirror of radius of curvature 20 cm are placed coaxially 40 cm from each other. An incident beam parallel to the principal axis is incident on the convex lens. Find the position and nature of the image found by this combination. So we have discussed the same kind of question before. So we have to calculate the image distance then draw the diagram. So the final image as you can see that it's a virtual image that appears to be formed behind the convex mirror at a distance of 6 cm. Thank you students.